our father, Henry V. Gonzalez, passed away today at around 427 this afternoon. Henry B. Gonzalez devoted his life to fighting for that which was right. When Henry B. Gonzalez died in the autumn of 2000, his passing sent a wave of grief through his beloved San Antonio, across the state of Texas, and the nation he'd served as a United States Congressman for 37 years. His people mourned. A public servant, a fighter for the disadvantaged, there would be a void and everyone knew it. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of Henry, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he may have... But this is not a story about a good man's passing. Rather, the way he lived his life. How he fought for others, leaving behind a legacy that death could not strip away. Henry B. Gonzalez was born in San Antonio in 1916, the son of political immigrants from Mexico. His parents had fled the threat of violence during the Mexican Revolution, escaping a stately home that's now a national landmark. It was a hard time in South Texas for Mexican immigrants. Rangers were known to have killed some who crossed the border, proudly posing for photos while dragging bodies over King Ranch. In school, he became known as Rique, one day coming home announcing he would be speaking English. His teacher had told him, you are American, so you must speak English. Henry read everything he could get his hands on, especially his Tesoro de la Juventud books, The Treasure of Youth. But in time, he developed his taste in history, biography, law, and philosophy. He listened closely to spirited talk around the dinner table of politics and hardships of destierro, of exile and not belonging, and his family's hope to someday return to their ancestral Mexican village. Early on, almost all of their news was about Mexico. They were keeping track of Mexico for all the exiles that were here. And they were all political refugees, basically, all expecting to go back. Discrimination against Hispanics in San Antonio was rampant. Neighborhoods were substandard, disease-ridden, and often violent. Thank goodness you never went through that, but I can remember the days when the people were huddled in these dirt floor little huts on the west side. Some of them leaned to shacks, in fact. No water, no um, disposable, no toilets, and uh, it seemed to me, at, even at that time, that the uh, city leaders were so short-sighted because it threatened, I felt, constantly, the health and well-being of the city of San Antonio. As a boy, Henry was ousted from parks and restaurants for being Mexican. He hawked Liberty Magazine on the streets and in office buildings. As a teenager, he worked in a drugstore, sweeping floors, making deliveries, and learning to get along with the demanding German sea captain who owned the place. In 1935, he graduated from high school and struggled long and hard to earn a college diploma. Finally graduating in 1943, 
with a law degree from St. Mary's University School of Law. But Henry was never able to scrape together enough money to take the bar exam. Along the way, he fell in love with Bertha Cuellar of Floresville, a marriage that would last 60 years until his death. Together, they raised eight children. Henry began work as a probation officer for Bayer County Juvenile Court during a time when young offenders were, at times, terrorized into going straight. He instituted a casework system, doing whatever he could to rescue troubled kids and failing families. He resigned the job as juvenile probation officer, the chief, but he was still interested in kids, right? So the next job he took was the executive director of a group called the Junior Deputies. But that was working with delinquent kids. It was terrible. We had more children on the west side of San Antonio, out of school, of the grade and junior years, than in school. It's just hard to believe today, but that was uh, the picture. He went to work with the newly established housing authority, acquiring land for slum clearance to make room for the first public homes in San Antonio. Mr. Gonzalez had just a firm belief in providing housing, affordable housing for low and very low income people. That was almost like the cause celebre for him. Gonzalez did everything he could to improve life in the barrio. He was a Boy Scout leader, an organizer of neighborhood credit unions around San Fernando Parish. So he made it always a point to address those issues publicly so that he could educate the community as to what the issues are that needed attention. He ran for city council and lost. He ran again and won, becoming the first Mexican-American city councilman in San Antonio history. I always love to have um, the give and take in a legislative body, beginning with the city council of San Antonio. And I never had uh, the means the wherewithal, and I had to depend on so many good friends and loyal friends that had been with me since the beginning. Gonzalez saw politics as a way to help more people. He was elected to the state senate in 1957, a victory described in the newspaper as a staggering upset against long odds. He was so important to our community a man of great vision, a man who, who, who fought, a man who had the courage, a man to be willing to be the long wolf, the man who would not turn over a commitment without conscience. During his five years in the Texas State Senate, he championed a medical school for San Antonio. He sponsored or introduced 42 bills that became law everything from land conservation and flood control to wage increase and opposition to the state sales tax. Always fighting for the working class poor. So he learned a lot about how to represent people, how to deal with injustice, and how to get the public behind you by addressing uh, public issues uh, in a way that people would understand them and see that the policy needed to be changed. A Kennedy appointment left vacant the state's 20th U.S. Congressional District, and with the backing of the Vice President, fellow Texan Lyndon Johnson, Gonzalez ran and won the seat. He was not selective with the people that elected him to his office. In fact, I think everybody knows, first time he was elected to Congress, he put a sign on the door, and he said, this office belongs to the American people. His popularity in his district was overwhelming. He was re-elected 17 times and often ran unopposed. Your father was really a champion. It will always loom as a great champion in the Congress, one of the greatest people to serve in the Congress of the United States. And that greatness is measured not only by his intellect and his values and his commitment, but his determination to always be there for working families in our country. Decent and affordable housing was at the heart of his legislative career. 
he believed with good housing, people could thrive. He supported legislation to end discrimination in housing loans and to expand credit for small business. Dad saw opportunity, and what he thought was, go for it. I mean, go for it. What's your guiding principle? To pay, maintain the status quo? No, of course not. It's really just to upset the status quo, uh, but make it a better system for everyone. Henry B. would say time and again, education is the single biggest engine of social progress. Also, I continue to be deeply troubled by the severe budgetary limitations on the domestic discretionary spending, particularly for the most vulnerable and working families in future years. Gonzalez never forgot the people he was elected to serve or the hard times that helped mold his social and political views. Uh, he had an amazing memory. He had an amazing uh, way of uh, remembering people. I'll never forget one time meeting a constituent and the individual said, you don't know who I am. And my grandfather stared at him for a prolonged period of time and then told him who he was. And the guy I thought was gonna fall over because this man had not seen my grandfather in some 30 something years. In 1993, he was honored by the minority law students of St. Mary's Law School for his lifetime achievements and commitment to the Hispanic community. Following his sudden death in the year 2000, Henry B. was memorialized in Congress as a man who never had a conflict of interest. His only special interest was his constituents. Someone I see holding up uh, the paper today with a large picture photograph of... Uh, it was lined like a parade of people with signs holding up, thank you, Henry B. Gracias, Henry B. It was amazing to see what the love the people had for him because he loved them and represented them so well. That which we remember never dies.